this bird was taller than an NBA player, with a beak that could crush bones, and claws sharp enough to make any predator think twice. Meet Kalenkin, the infamous terror bird that once roamed the land of prehistoric Patagonia. This flightless bird dominated its environment with a combination of size, speed, and sheer ferocity that makes modern predators look like gentle house pets. What's tragic is despite being so freaking amazing, Kalenkin got just one appearance on the old show Prehistoric Predators. We think it deserves another go. So in this video, we're taking you back in time to when this ginormous bird ruled the land. Standing at a staggering height of 10 feet or 3 meters, Kalenkin was pretty tall. In fact, it was one of the largest birds ever to walk the earth. To give you a better picture, that's about as tall as an average one-story house. Weighing in at around 500 pounds or 227 kilograms, this bird wasn't just tall, it was robust and muscular, built to overpower its prey. Kalenkin's most distinctive feature was its massive skull, which measured 28 inches or 71 centimeters in length, the largest known skull of any bird, extinct or living. This skull housed a beak that wasn't just for show, the beak was capable of delivering forceful, bone-crushing bites, making it a deadly weapon in the bird's arsenal. Now you'd think, since this bird was so big, it was probably slow, but nah, uh Kalenkin was surprisingly fast. Its long legs were built for speed and endurance, allowing it to chase down prey with ease. These legs also gave it an impressive stride, making it a formidable runner. Although its feathers were not suited for flight, they provided insulation and a degree of protection from the environment. As for what it ate, you know a bird's going to be scary when it's a meat eater. Kalenkin was a carnivore and not a picky one. Its diet likely consisted of small to medium-sized mammals, reptiles, and even other birds. With a beak designed for tearing flesh and crushing bones, it could take on a variety of prey. All terror birds were scavengers. They are often thought to have been the top predators in South America during the Cenozoic era, especially since there were no large placental mammal predators around. However, they did live alongside some big meat-eating mammals, called borehyanids. Early ideas about how these birds hunted were mostly based on their large heads with hooked beaks, rather than detailed studies. It wasn't until the early 2000s that scientists started doing more in-depth research on how these birds ran and hunted. In 2003, researchers Alvarenga and Elizabeth Hoffling shared some general thoughts about the habits of terror birds. They pointed out that these birds couldn't fly, which was clear from the size of their wings compared to their body weight. Bigger birds in this group had even smaller wings. The researchers suggested that the narrow shape of their pelvis, upper jaw, and chest might have helped them hunt smaller animals in areas with tall plants or rough terrain. They also noted that the large bony structures above their eyes, similar to those in modern hawks, would have protected their eyes from the sun and given them excellent vision. This means that terror birds likely hunted by sight in open sunny areas rather than in dark forests. Its hunting strategy involved stalking its prey with stealth and then delivering a fatal strike with its powerful beak and sharp claws. As a top predator, this bird had no natural enemies giving it free reign over its hunting grounds. It likely relied on a combination of speed and surprise to catch its prey. As mentioned earlier, Kalenkin was pretty agile, so it was capable of quick bursts of speed to close in on its target. Once within striking distance, it would use its beak to deliver a crushing blow, incapacitating its prey instantly. Its claws also played a crucial role in its hunting technique. These fierce claws, similar to those seen in modern birds of prey, were perfect for gripping and tearing apart its catch. Apart from these, it had several other notable features. Its legs were long and powerful, built for both speed and endurance. These legs not only helped Kalenkin run down its prey, but also made it a capable traveler, covering large distances in search of food. Moreover, its vision was likely sharp, similar to that of modern raptors. This keen eyesight would have been helpful in spotting prey and avoiding obstacles while sprinting at high speeds. This bird comes from the open plains and scrublands of prehistoric Patagonia, 
a region that is now part of modern-day Argentina. This habitat provided plenty of space for the bird to roam and hunt, with a climate that supported a diverse range of prey animals. The open landscape also allowed Kalenkin to use its height advantage to spot potential meals from a distance, making it a master of its domain. The plains of Patagonia were a dynamic and ever-changing environment, with a mix of grasslands, forests and rivers. This diverse landscape supported a variety of animal species, from small mammals to large herbivores. Kalenkin's ability to adapt to different types of prey and hunting conditions made it a dominant predator in this region. The climate of prehistoric Patagonia was likely more temperate than it is today, with mild winters and warm summers. This climate would have been ideal for Kalenkin, providing a steady supply of food year-round. The abundance of prey animals in the region allowed Kalenkin to thrive, maintaining its position at the top of the food chain. Now, let's look at its evolutionary trail for some more context here. In 2007, Bertelli and colleagues described Kalenkin and classified it within the forest racids family, based on its enormous size, sideways compressed and strongly hooked beak, and convex culmen. After the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs, mammals diversified during the early Cenozoic, and some bird groups, including the forest racids, Gastonithidae, Dromornithidae, and Paleognithi, evolved towards gigantism. Forest racids are an extinct group within the Cariomiformes, whose only living members today are the two species of Cerimas in the family Cariomidae. While forest racids is the most diverse group within the Cariomiformes, their exact relationships are unclear due to incomplete fossil records. Forest racids first appeared in South America during the Paleocene, a time when the continent was isolated. They persisted until the Pleistocene and even appeared in North America during the Great American Biotic Interchange at the end of the Pliocene. Although fossils from Europe have been assigned to this group, their classification remains disputed. Now, the story of Kalenkin's discovery is almost as thrilling as the bird itself. In 2006, paleontologists unearthed the first Kalenkin fossils in the La Buerta locality of Patagonia. The find included a remarkably well-preserved skull, which provided a lot of insight into the bird's anatomy and lifestyle. Named after a figure from Tehelehu mythology, Kalenkin ahagensis, this discovery shed light on the diverse and dynamic ecosystem of prehistoric South America. The fossil record indicates that Kalenkin lived during the Miocene epoch, approximately 15 million years ago. This period was a time of significant change and adaptation for many species, and Kalenkin's dominance as a top predator highlights its successful adaptation to the challenges of its environment. Kalenkin's remains have also been discovered in the Kura Formation, located in the southeastern corner of Camalo, Patagonia. This area is known for its whitish tufts, which are rocks ejected by volcanic eruptions. When Kalenkin was found, the area's rock layers hadn't been fully studied, and the exact age of the sediments wasn't clearly determined. The Kolankura Formation was formed in a broken foreland system, with several disconnected basins. The formation mainly consists of volcanoclastic limestones and sandstones, which were deposited in continental environments. These environments ranged from alluvial, meaning they were created by running water, to lacrustine, which means they were formed by lakes. During the Colincuran age of South America, more open environments with less plant cover were common. These landscapes were similar to semi-arid and temperate to warm dry woodlands or bushlands. This shift allowed for more running adapted and large animals, unlike the previous late early Miocene period which had well-developed forests and tree-dwelling animals. These forests were mostly limited to the valleys of mountain ranges, with fewer tree-dwelling species. This transition to more open and arid landscapes occurred alongside global climate changes, known as the Middle Miocene Climate Transition, a cooling event that dried out many continents. Discovering Kalenkin was a landmark moment in paleontology. It gave us a look into the life of one of the largest and most fearsome birds to have ever existed. The well-preserved skull allowed scientists to study the bird's anatomy in detail, revealing important information about its diet, predatory habits, and overall lifestyle. This discovery also highlighted the importance of the La Buerta locality as a rich source of prehistoric fossils. Now, 
the only question that remains is, what wiped this bird off the planet? Well, just like many prehistoric giants, Kalenken eventually met its demise. The exact cause of its extinction remains a topic of debate among scientists. Some theories suggest that changes in climate and habitat played a significant role, while others point to competition with emerging predators and changes in prey availability. As the Miocene Epoch gave way to the Pliocene, the ecosystems of South America underwent significant transformations. These changes likely created new challenges for Kalenkin, leading to its eventual extinction. Despite its fearsome reputation, Kalenkin was unable to adapt to the rapidly changing environment, marking the end of its reign as one of the top predators of its time. This bird's extinction serves as a reminder of the delicate balance of ecosystems and the impact of environmental changes on species survival. While Kalenkin was a dominant predator, it was not immune to the challenges posed by a changing world. Today, Kalenkin stands as an amazing reminder of the incredible diversity and complexity of prehistoric life. Its towering height, powerful beak, and fierce predatory habits make it one of the most fearsome creatures to have ever existed. While we may never see the likes of this bird again, its legacy lives on in the fossil record and videos like this. If you could give this terrifying bird a nickname based on its characteristics, what would it be? Drop your suggestions in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.